for coming to the First Presbyterian Church here on the Thanksgiving Eve service. And before we start our worship, I want to note a correction in our bulletin on the last song. The number would be 557, and I'll remind you before we sing. Join me in the call to worship, found in your bulletin. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the setting, the, the, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Let us pray. Loving God, creator of all that has been, all that is, and all that is to come, you made us who we are and gave us hearts to love you and follow you. We thank you for the many blessings you have given us over this past year. God, we thank you for all the blessings you have given us throughout our lives. Food to eat, clothes to wear, shelter from the storm, people who love us. We thank you for their love because we recognize that their love is for us is a reflection of your love. We acknowledge that there are times in our lives when we ourselves feel unloved and unlovable. Give us the grace to love others, even when they are difficult. We trust that your faithfulness to carry us over through the rough places of life we trust in your love to walk with us through the difficulties of our days. We trust in your promise of everlasting and to put all of our hope in you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for that he, that he died so we might have eternal life. Amen. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, We Gather Together. <laughs> Please remain standing and join me in the unison prayer of confession. In the midst of our thanksgiving, let us pause in silence to recall how so often sight of the gifts of each day and of their giver. Let us pray, O oh God. We know that we forget about you. We forget to love you. We forget to help our neighbors. We forget to thank you. Forgive us. Grant us clear minds to know you, new hearts to love you, strong hands to serve you. Help us live this day, this week, 
and always, and our whole life is in thanksgiving to you. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Though we are unworthy, we were granted God's favor in Jesus Christ and were baptized into his beloved son's church. Friends, believe in the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. may be seated. Hear the words of the Old Testament reading found in Psalm 138, and you can find it in your pew Bibles on the screen as well. Hear the word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple, and I will praise your name. For you are unfail your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord. When they hear what you have decreed, may they sing of the ways of the Lord. For the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees us from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your Lord, your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament. This time, we'll please stand and sing our hymn of preparation. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. may be seated. Please join me in the reading of the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 5, then 13 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord. 
Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the true truth plainly, we commend ourselves and everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. Continued on to 13. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace is reaching more and more people will ca may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since it's seen, what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and to know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, yet that we may serve you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Sometimes, when I look around in the world and see what's going on, I really wonder what is happening today. It seems all we see or hear on the news is bad things that are happening around the world. If you look at any major headlines in the news, all you see is things that bring fear, uncertainty, or even suffering. Just naming a few, they cover the effects of natural disasters that are happening all around the world. We see, hear, or read article after articles of war and violence. Innocent lives are suffering because of lack of clear water, food, and shelter. Yet we live in a time where we have plenty of resources and big homes. But hearing some of this isn't necessarily bad. When our brothers and sisters and our neighbors and our enemies are hurting and suffering, it is good to know that we can lift them up in prayer and be the hands and feet of Jesus and serve them in their needs. But the media thrives on these bad news, gossip, and questions of uncertainty. As Christians, we might find more things in the news that are disheartening to us. We might feel like we're being directly attacked on what we believe in. I don't know about you, but I get tired of this world and how much bad there is. My heart becomes weary and the burdens bear down, making my bones ache. At this time, it would be easy to forget the promise, to give in to the pressure, to forget what has been given. The other day I was visiting somebody from our church and we got talking and the current events of the world came up in our conversation. As we were talking, that fear and uncertainty started creeping in to our words. And I mentioned how I felt uncertain about how we live in this world today and what it would mean to bring a family into the world right now and all the evil that I'm seeing in the world. And this man, he paused for a while. And then he shared, he too felt the same way when he was my age. He went to share about the war he fought in all the terrors he saw and heard about, 
the suffering of people, the starvation of those around the world. Yet he was still here today, and he raised a family through all of that. And he still lived and was strong in his faith. Even though the world seemed to be filled with so much bad that couldn't get any worse. After he shared this with me, something started to click in my mind that what's happening now and all the bad things that are happening have always been there since the fall of humankind. We have suffered through many hardship, generation after generation, some from our own hands as we sin against others, and some by the hands of others to ourselves. Yet each generation passes to the next, and lies continue to grow and even thrive in this darkness of the world as it seems today. Some might think, well, how can you have such great faith through these dark times? Where does this hope come from? Well, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. At this time that Paul was writing his letters, there was many things to be afraid of and especially if you are a Christian. On Sunday, we were reminded of how Paul himself was persecuting Christians. Just like us, Paul had many reasons to lose heart, to give up in this ministry, to give up in his faith. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul is writing in direct defense of his ministry that he was called to do by God. He was faced with accusations of false teaching from those he was trying to reach out to. He lived in a world where Christians faced daily persecution and oppression, not just from the government, but from friends, families, com their community, their neighbors. The government he lived in seeked power and conformity of the social norms of the culture. There was still sickness, hunger, oppression, war, and terror. Yet all these bad things that were brought on by sin and the darkness that follows with it were washed away from a single man. And this was Paul's message. This man's name was Jesus. This was Paul's strength. His, heart, his strength of heart does not come from his own being, but from the Holy Spirit that gave him strength to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul shows gratefulness through his adversity. Paul is eternally thankful to God. And why would this be? Well, because he knew that his own sins and how much he had sinned and how heavy they were. But he knew that he had been forgiven, each sin that he committed. And even though he lived through dark, fearful, and hard times in his life, he knew that he had been saved by Jesus Christ. Well, we too have this promise that we can be saved. We can have Paul's courage and strength of heart. Yet it won't be easy to obtain this. Paul knew his own battle of his generation and what they faced and what he faced himself. He writes in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of, of God. We too have gods of our age who blind those around us to the truth of the gospel. Instead, they show us fear and uncertainty. They, they are great tempters and they, they're smooth talkers. They try to block the light from our eyes. Yet, we do not need to fear. For he continues to write that God said, Let light shine out of darkness. Make his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. As Christians here living in the United States, we have been blessed with a comfort of protection from our faith of how we practice it. Though these times it seems like that too might be in jeopardy. Things are changing in our country and in our church. 
but the promise salvation of Jesus Christ hasn't changed. Although we might seem we are attacked from the outside and inside, our, our promise is eternal. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though it seems like the world is wasting away be- around us, eternally we are renewed day by day in the world with us. Through this promise of the Lord, our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, we don't fix our eyes on what is seen and happening in this world as the truth, for that is only temporary. Rather, we fix our eyes upon Jesus, who is eternal, and what is unseen. Those of us who have found Jesus to be our Lord and Savior know this promise, that God loved us so much that he brought his son to earth to die for our sins on the cross but raised from the dead to overcome this barrier that we had against God and that we can join him eternally in heaven. And we are are eternally grateful for this and what it entails. But this doesn't mean we sit and wait for something to happen. We don't just wait. Each generation will come face to face with similar hardships and pains that they have to deal with in this world. But as believers of Jesus Christ, it is our calling and our duty to reach out to those and share the truth of the gospel. The gift of God is for all who believe, not just for a few. But we don't stop with just sharing words and truth. We, we reach out with our hands and our feet and our bodies and our minds. We help those in need, those who are suffering, those who are hungry. And those who are in pain and those who are lonely. As Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4.15, this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow in the glory of God. So as we go out and celebrate thanksgiving with family and friends and those around us, maybe we're serving here at the church serving somewhere else locally or spending time together with your loved ones. Let us remember why we come together and that we do not need to fear, although there is much to fear around us, for we have the promise of the Holy Spirit and the gift of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. For we have much to be thankful for because God's promise is eternal. Amen. Please join me in the Thanksgiving prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. O God, whose love endures forever, whose faithfulness is to all generations. O God, when I have food. O God, when I have work. O God, when I have a home. O oh God, when I am without pain, help me, to those who suffer. help me to destroy my complacency by word and deed, those who cry out for what we take for granted. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to um, worship God by giving ourselves and our gifts. Um, This offering will be going to the Helping Hand Fund. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God.
Let us pray. How can we thank you enough for all you have given us, Lord? We have so much, more than enough, to supply all of our needs. As we present our tithes and offering today, make us mindful of the people whose earthly needs we are called to supply. In deepest gratitude, we offer ourselves back to you for your service and in your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Remain standing for our last song in Thanksgiving. Let us praise him. And this is 557. All of you are welcome to join us um, for pie in the fellowship hall after, um, after the service. So. As we go from this place, filled with hope and renewed in the Holy Spirit, go out and share God's love, which has been so graciously shared with you. Amen. <laughs>